Hello everyone, today we will be diving into our system design course today, focusing on databases, storage, retrieval, and indexing. So in today's lecture for the world of databases and uh, focusing on the fundamentals of storage and retrieval and indexing, at the heart of it, a database's purpose is twofold. One, it stores data. So I'm just gonna put databases, store data, as we all know. And uh, the second part is retrieving. The stored data. Uh, so we can think of it as a incredibly well organized librarian who not only knows every book, but also remembers which book you borrow. Knows every piece of storage and history. Of storage and retrieval. Let's fix this really quick. Uh, for developers, understanding a database's internal storage and retrieval mechanism is akin to knowing the workings of the Cars engine. Uh, it's not just about making it run, it's about tuning it to peak performance uh, for whatever race the car's on or whatever application the database is being used for. Some databases are like sprinters, optimized for transactional workloads. Um, so there are different databases. for different purposes, slash application, uh, stock trading platforms, for instance, would use speed, so fast transactions. That could be just one case. Um, uh, other um, other applications of other databases could be like marathon runner, uh, runners, uh, designed for analytical workloads with stamina to handle large volumes of data over time, also known as analytics. So uh, we can uh, metaphorize both of them as like a sprinter versus marathon runner. They're both athletes but they serve different purposes. Purposes, slash environments, Within, um, within these different forms of databases, there's a subset of storage engines as well. Um, called, um, there might be another uh, different variation of them. We can have a different series of them, depending on whatever application and variety of use cases will be used for databases. Um, there are, for instance, column-oriented storage engines uh, in one example, and they're good at analyzing processing in particular. So overall, the main concept that we're just trying to get over here is that there are different databases for different applications, and they also have different means of storage, uh, retrieval, and indexing. We'll be going over our concept example and our two practice problems as well to be able to help solidify our understanding. So let me just zoom out just a bit. Let's clean this up. There we go. And and feel free to take a screenshot of this and we'll move over to our concept example. So now let's imagine that we are building a new social media platform. Uh, it's going to handle millions of users who will be sharing and interacting with a multitude of posts, images, and videos. And our choice of database is gonna be very critical uh, for the high speed interactions, such as shares and comments, namely, uh, 
you could do a transactional database. So really the main concept that we need to uh, say is, hey, what database are we going to use? If we're going to go for speed, most of the time we're going to do a transactional database. And um, really that the point of it is to be able to understand the activity and efficiency of how we can apply that database on set activity. However, um, if we want to analyze user behavior to tailor the feed for target uh, audiences and advertising, uh, we can do a column base. So anything related with analysis, we can do a column based. Database. Um, so column based or column oriented based same type of principle and so now if we're going to be able to strip down to the basics with with um, the world's simplest database uh, which uses two bash functions uh, to set and get as our example over here so if I want to zoom in this is the simplest database Uh, overall, all we're doing is just doing a set and get, which are these two bash functions uh, to illustrate a key value storage. So this is also a key value storage. Um, we can input any data, maybe like a JSON document, uh, and retrieve the latest, uh, the latest value associated with the key, uh, namely. So. In this case, uh, this one looks like it's going to be the key over here and to be able to implement inside of our database that we have. It's overall the set and get uh, method in the world's simplest uh, database is simple and quite efficient. It's akin to uh, jotting down notes in the pad. However, as time typically goes on, as we know within our next, I'm actually going to make this one and put it down below to be able to illustrate more. Because really, we're going to be focusing on the complexity as all this is going down. So as more notes are added to the pad, um, the notebook in of itself, in a metaphor, so we can think of a database as a notebook. And you can write anything in it. And you can put any form of data that you really want. However, the type of notebook, depending on what you want, maybe there might be like uh, engineering notebooks, maybe art notebooks, maybe you're doing it for video in that case. Um, it can be anything. But again, they have their different forms of applications uh, to already be set in place. And sometimes the more data or notes you typically put in, the more complex and more uh, intricate it's gonna take for that notebook uh, to be able to actually store and manage that data and also be able to quickly retrieve it at the same time. Because if you're writing in more notes inside of a notebook, for instance, and you need to search out the key concept, it's gonna take a long time to be able to find it as a notebook becomes thicker. Uh, so overall, we would have to think about different applications for different cases of considered notebooks or databases that can fit well within our application that will make it more efficient and be able to uh, store and retrieve our data with proper indexing as well. So we need to focus on efficiency of storage and retrieval and indexing. Uh, let's just move this up. I'm just going to clean this part up so we can see the whole thing. You can take a screenshot. All right. Okay, and now let's head over to our first practice problem. Now to go over our first practice problem, um, let's consider uh, tasking with improving the search efficiency of a growing e-commerce platform's uh, product database. 
when we do so, uh, the database is a straightforward key value uh, storage. Uh, so, base, simple key value storage. Where each product's unique ID is the key. And the value is all the data related to the product. So actually, our details is the value. So product details is the value. And we'll notice uh, that uh, finding a product uh, over time as we continue to add more typically gets slower as the inventory grows for we already know like databases or just like notebooks that's the best way of describing it and as you add more to the notebook it's going to get harder in particular to be able to find information since the notebook is already filled with more and more information over time similar preference within and some are dynamic with databases as well. And in order for us to be able to address uh, more information, we need to create an indexing structure that accelerates the retrieval process. So we create an indexing structure to accelerate the process. So this is just a simple uh, product ID that we already have. And then this is also in the case of searching for a common product to create, um, to be able to get a product's name relative to their ID. And it could be uh, for instance, a product type, product value. So this is our key that we have. And the name will be considered the value. And this is this value is also interchangeable to other uh, components whenever we're doing a key value pairing. So the steps for us to be able to actually go through and create a robust indexing is that the first step, we need to uh, design the index. assign the key value pairs and the next part is to implement the index as we've already seen And the third step will be improving indexing. It's pretty straightforward. So a lot of the times when improving indexing and maybe enhancing space and time complexity, for data retrieval. If I'm in the index is pretty straightforward, let me just clean this up. There we go. And alrighty then. Let me just move this over. All right, feel free to take a screenshot and we'll head over to our second practice problem. And now let's go over our second practice problem. So in our second, second practice problem, let's shift our attention to a public library's digital archive. Uh, this system stores thousands of digital books, each with a unique identifier. So there are thousands of books.
with unique identifiers or IDs, we'll just put it right here, and uh, associated metadata. Typically, we already know exactly between what the key is. I'll just use a different color in this case. It'll be a key, unique ID, and the metadata are the values. And the problem is similar to the previous one, and we already know that databases are like notebooks, where as the archive grows, uh, patrons find it increasingly slow to locate specific books. Complexity overall increases, so complexity increases as more data gets added. So I would say complexity increases with search slash indexing. There we go. And so if we're able to go further in depth in terms of our example with what we have, uh, in order for us to be able to actually figure out how to search and index properly throughout this specific database. So the library's database is slow because every book starts with um, In this case, in our example, we're going to have is that we need to find the most efficient way to search and index our database. Unfortunately, in this case, in our example, uh, the library is already uh, stretched out between books with titles ranging from A to Z. However, there are more efficient ways to be able to actually uh, index throughout the given database, such as we can have th uh, multiple parameters to search for specific knowledge. So we would have to implement multiple parameters to search for a specific book. When we have done so, uh, we can then know exactly how we could design the index and implement the index. So if I'm just going to I'm just going to create some extra space over here. Give it one second. There we go. There we go. So, the first step that we would typically have to do would be the following. One, design the index. When we have designed the index, uh, the index needs to be particularly sophisticated, um, namely because we will have to consider the parameters. So consider parameters to search for specific book. Then the next one will be figuring out how we improve. So improve the index. In this case, since we're using multiple parameters, since we have different subjects of title, author, and subject, these are all considered uh, different keys. So these parameters are keys. And the value is always considered their metadata. So going back to the first one we would consider our keys and values. And when we implement the index, let me just clean this up.
since we have a multi-key indexing system, uh, we can think of different forms of algorithms to be able to apply. So we would apply different algorithms to search and index, search slash index, a number of examples that could work. Be B trees. Since they're multi keys, maybe we can even put in a hash map or even a uh, graph tree. Just to name a few, as a few ideas. Here, after we design the index, we then implement and improve. So yeah, this was our uh, system design video lecture series focusing on databases for searching, uh, retrieving, and indexing. Thank you again for taking time to watch this. If you found this video helpful, be sure and feel free to please like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions as well, feel free to put it in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.